All, All right. right. So let's start with uh, what was the inspiration for the story? Uh, the inspiration for I Origins was the I. It's so that's, that's an obvious one. Uh, I wish I could make it more profound. But I think the the I is this beautiful, wonderful, strange art piece that's unique to yourself. Mm -hmm. Every all seven billion people on the planet have their own unique eyes. And if you look really, really, really closely at your friends or your loves or your dog's eye, uh, you'll see it looks like a universe. And there's so much science in the film. What kind of research did you both do as a director and as an actor to get into the role, get into you know the entire Eye Origins scientific side? Uh, we had the good fortune to go and visit the Johns Hopkins uh, research laboratories in Baltimore and work with a lot of the molecular biologists there. Um, and Michael could talk about his experiences there. I think. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really research anything. You know, <laughs> I don't really even want to go. He made, <laughs> he made me go. We, um, we had arm wrestling, and I lost, and therefore he had to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he got me on that one. It was a good. It was Very like a clever. lot of good trick. <laughs> like if clever. I lose, you cop to come. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, done. <laughs> Wait a second. What happened? Um, yeah, no, we we spent. Um, Mike was really cool about like setting, you know, setting up time for, for me and Britt to to work in a lab at, um, in Baltimore, and I always screw up the name of the lab, which is uh, Johns Hopkins. John, Johns Hopkins, um, which is like a huge, huge medical center, and we actually, you know, we went in there, we met scientists, we we like they let us sort of like crash some of their experiments and like let us you know really really took us under their wing and um i mean it was amazing it was amazing to be able to do that as an actor to like go through those motions and and really have that time and we d we shot some of the movie like yeah, we yeah. shot some of the movie there. Yeah, we did some camera tests. Like Mike would come in with a camera and just like, oh, do that again, and like, <laughs> and shoot. And then, uh, you know, I think by that night it was cut together. And yeah. He was like, <laughs> like, let's go to Toronto and get in the press tour. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Is it difficult to sort of blend the whole spirituality angle, the science? Is that is that difficult to have the two of them sort of come together in harmony and as well this film is a romance. So you have the science, you have the spiritual existentialism part and a romance in this film. Is that Yeah, uh, difficult uh it's it's definitely something I'm obsessed with. I love those three things that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Spirituality, science and romance. Mm -hmm. Um when it comes to spirituality and science, a lot of people think they're like Mm -hmm. Smashing like on a battlefield, Lord of the Rings. Like here's the army of the spirituality, here's mm -hmm. the army of the science, and they're colliding. But what's kind of interesting, or or at least w the way we approach it in this film, is that uh, science is the domain of the physical. Mm -hmm. Like you can test what you can perceive with your natural senses. Spirituality is metaphysical. It's beyond. Like we may not have access to it. Uh, and the character Sophie, played by Ashton Burgess Frisbee, points this out in a very beautiful, poetic moment when she's in the lab with Ian, when she talks about the worms. Did you see the movie? Oh yeah. Oh great. yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh cool. Saw it a week ago, still thinking about <laughs> no, it. No okay. So yeah, it's one of those movies. So since I've left, I've been staring at everybody's eyes really? now and looking. Yeah. What color eyes do I have? Blue? Green? <laughs> in the light? Uh, I don't green, know. blue. Actually, I don't know. I'm blue, green? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is all is everything, all of the discussions that the characters have, was all of that in the script on day one, or does that come out of as you're going through rehearsals, as you're discussing it, are you having these, you know, these conversations? Mike was really set? gracious about like um, he he's kind of amazing uh, at editing ideas. You know, he he really he really wanted us to play with the characters. He wanted us to to become them. He, he um, d definitely took like, you know, things that we that that we thought about the character. He definitely took it. He took the good things and basically discarded all the bad things. So, so uh, it's kind of a dream for for an actor. Gosh, I remember us like spending that time in my living room and everybody would write like what they would say and then everybody talked about it and then we like yeah, yeah. The, uh, the the beauty about working with like brilliant actors and I find mm -hmm. that Michael is one of those brilliant actors in the world. Uh, 
in the universe. Uh, and I'm so lucky to have worked with them. The beauty of, of actors who are so talented is they dig so deep into their characters and you can harness that depth that they uncover. Um, as a director, of like, I mean, that's gold. They're pulling gold and diamonds and oil and uh, rubies <laughs> and, <laughs> and things out of the ground. And, uh, and they, they're, you know. And, and Michael, how did you get involved in the project? Because I heard this was written for you. You were sort of on board before there was even a script. Well, I mean, there was, there was, uh, I think, I think Mike had this idea in his head for, for many years, I think. Um, how many years do you think? Like, uh, he, he had been toying around uh, with with the idea of the film for twelve years. <laughs> twelve wow. years. So, um, but when when we met, we met just on a general meeting. He he explained the idea, and I was I was like, wow, um, I really think that you should spend some time on that. And I guess that inspired him because two weeks later, he just like turned around the first draft, sent it to me. I was like, holy shit. And, and Ian's a pretty straight-laced guy. You're kind of, you know, you play more offbeat weirdos, we like to call them, so. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and the last time I saw you, you were cutting your face off on Hannibal, so oh, okay. amazing. Yeah. Um, but what, what, <laughs> what was it about Ian that um, you really wanted, made you want to play him? Well, one thing, one thing that really interests, well, one thing that interests me about Ian was that I haven't played someone like him and I knew that I was capable of playing a character like that, but most most people within the business, they want to see what you've done, or um, they basically want to see what you've done again and again and again. And um, the fact that Mike trusted me with this character and that he saw it in me mm -hmm. um, really made me, one, respect him as an artist, and two, um, kind of, Say this guy. This guy's on on a level. He's seeing things that other people aren't seeing. And can we just talk briefly about the final act of the film? Is set in India. So why sure. India? Uh, India is India is the perfect place for the third act of this film to take place. Um, I notice I often say place twice in a row when I say that statement. Uh, uh, the reason why India is great <laughs> is because uh, in India. The belief in uh, reincarnation is, is like the air that they breathe, or the ground that they walk upon. It's very fundamental. And also, it's the, as a nation state, it's one of the only places in the world where iris biometric, like scanning of eyes, that technology is so advanced that they're scanning every citizen's eyes. And for our film, that, as you said, it's like the, the, the canvas where science and spirituality meet. This is a perfect place for a story like this to, to reach its climax. That's great. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.